our story. Without wasting time, I'd now request Additional Secretary, Mr. Inderjeet Singh, to please take the session forward. Good afternoon, friends. Welcome to this uh, last session of the day before the valedictory session. I have uh, distinguished uh, panel members with me on the dais. Uh, although I am feeling a little bit guilty that I may not be able to do justice to their knowledge and expertise because of the shortage of time, because we have to uh, conclude this session by about 4.30 or at the most 4.40. So may, I would request the panelists that they make their address or the presentation within uh, about five minutes. And if some panelists say, make some savings, maybe the other panelists make use of that extra one minute or so. Uh, now, as all of us know, uh, the topic of this session is International Solar Alliance Innovative Solutions for Climate Change. Now, all of you know that it was on 30th November 2015, roughly a year back, when COP20 was held in Paris that that time 120 odd countries which are lying between the Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn, they resolved, they declared to come together to form an alliance which now has come to be known as International Solar Alliance for a common cause to use how best the solar energy which is a, the most uh, important renewable source of energy and how can this alliance which will be an international body India is lucky to have the headquarters of this body uh, in India will, which is one of the very few international bodies where, which are housed in this uh, part of the region. As you know since last 10 to 11 months a lot of progress has taken place for the formation of International Solar Alliance. It was just yesterday only that the fourth steering committee was held in which more than 60 countries' representatives participated and they have expressed their uh, concurrence, their acceptance to the concept in broad terms and the joint framework which has been dwelt by the India and France. They have, uh, we have unveiled that uh, framework in this uh, fourth uh, steering committee and we are hoping to shortly finalize this framework agreement and open it for signatures and then to the next steps of ratification and then this body comes into being as an legal entity as an international organization. Now the question arises how this body can help for innovative solutions for the climate change. Now I as a chairperson uh, rather would avoid uh, saying more. Let's hear from the panelists what they have to tell us uh, on this uh, important topic so that such an, uh, even India as a one single country has set up such an ambitious target of achieving 100 gigawatts of solar power by 2022. Just about six years back we had just 8 megawatts. Today we have 8 plus gigawatts. And in another six years, we want to touch uh, 100 gigawatts. This definitely requires innovative solutions, both in terms of technology as well as finance. Because finance is one of the major concern. We want cheaper sources of finance, especially even the other countries where we are wanting to uh, support the other countries in the region. How can we go together and provide a cheaper finance bring down the cost of the solar power so that it becomes affordable for everybody and help us, helps us in uh, taking care of the climate change. Now I will stop here and I will request uh, Mr. Methani to first make the theme presentation, then it will be followed by uh, panelist remarks for five minutes each. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman, sir, fellow panelists, distinguished gathering, including our Secretary, sir, is also there. Thank you. 
we have a distinguished panel here which will be covering different aspects of the interstellar solar lines so i will i will not go in detail i'll just briefly cover what exactly is the genesis behind it how it initiated and what are the aims and what are the dreams behind this entire alliance in june 2014 this dream was just this idea was born what what are you here this idea was born and that if you look at the global solar distribution you will find that apart from the most of the developing countries which are in the in the within the tropics have the best of the solar radiations but in so far as the the share of solar energy in their in energy mix is concerned it is not even 5% if we exclude india and china among the developing countries at all that was one of the thing and second thing is that the technologies the kind of resources and the kind of the sharing of information it is completely lagging kind of the system was there so this this led to the idea which our honorable prime minister just thought of it and this dream and this dream something wrong this fine this fine so the idea was that those countries which are having best of the solar resources should be empowered with this solar energy should be empowered with the technologies should be having the kind of the power in power to negotiate the terms for getting these technologies as well as they have sufficient wherewith about to implement these programs also this was the initial idea and over the period all the things went off and in the paris when when it came for signing of a declaration then a declaration was read in paris and this is really a historical declaration i will just read some lines what was agreed to in the paris that we hereby declare our intention to support india's proposal to launch an international solar alliance as a common platform for cooperation among solar resources countries lying fully or partially between tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn this is one of the fundamental thing which was the part of this entire international solar alliance this apart from other things one of the most important thing which the declaration speaks of was that we have a intent, intent to make joint efforts through innovative policies projects programs capacity building measures and financial instruments to mobilize more than 1000 billion us dollars to investment that are needed by 2030 for massive deployment of affordable solar energy these are the two guiding things which led the entire journey at the time of the paris declaration when in, in paris it was this was this was declared since then a lot of work has gone i will not go in the details but broadly i'll say this is the launch ceremony then the secretariat was inaugurated here on the 25th of january and these are the mainly five major areas which international solar alliance is planning to work some of these activities have been envisioned as of now but there are may, yet many more activities are yet to come and that these activities has to be visualized in order to see what is the specific needs and circumstances of these countries and accordingly it has to be moved ahead first is that mobilizing finance that is everybody is speaking since morning i am listening many of the presentation finance use this mic is much problem hai aur oh. audible nahi hai theek okay okay thank you so one of the major thing is that finance which everybody is speaking since morning that how finances and not only finance but how affordable finance what the cost of fund is really low which can be afforded to is arranged for the all deployment of the solar energy that is the first thing second what kind of applications these are the range of applications not only for electricity not only for off grid but thermal and other heating applications these all encompass entire ecosystem of the solar research and development this is one of the major thing which mr mathur just the chair of the previous session was mentioning about the south south cooperation if you look at the take the clue from the climate negotiations also or other kind of negotiations which are having in this entire gamut of the things for the technologies creating a kind of network where all the countries have some kind of inability and power for the research and development and they know as as to how and why these things are happening and they can produce the things and move ahead in a big way this is one of the dream which isa has looked at in a big way to begin with networking of research institutions empowering them through the knowledge which one has to pass it to another one and then creating a kind of grid for all these things capacity building no need to underline it again mr bangar rai mentioned these kind of examples will certainly take a lead under the isa and most importantly how the information and knowledge can be shared among all the countries in a way which is easily available accessible and knowledge is just freely communicable among all these things and create a institutional mechanism for that purpose that is the underlying objective out of these five principles which isa will work on i'll not go in the details there are many activities like these two programs mr 
Dr. Sastri will talk on the agriculture. Mr. Pokli will talk on finance here in the panel. And Yuri Sir are also there. He's also here. World Bank, just I'll say, in so far as finance is concerned, this is one of the major areas which needs to be addressed. And the, for, in order to reduce the cost of finance, World Bank has taken a big lead. They have come in a big way to put helping hand. And a joint declaration with the World Bank and International Solar Alliance was signed on 30th of June. 2016 and many activities which many of them, yes, Mr. Agrawal will just mention about that also, that will be narrated and moved ahead in a big way. So some of the slips there. Finally, I'll say, in so far as, so far as concerned, the framework agreement of ISA was under negotiation. Paris Declaration was the basis and the countries entered into kind of discussion and over the period and ultimately a kind of what exactly will be the framework under which ISA will work that has been by and large agreed by India and France and it has been circulated to all the countries yesterday in the fourth international steering committee meeting of ISA and the main provision which this framework agreement speaks is that it invokes Paris declaration of ISA membership is primarily for the countries which are within the tropics fully or partially and partner country status will be given for those countries which are outside the tropics and it has two tiers in order to make it slim and lean without too much bureauc bureaucracy it has an assembly and the secretary will be responsible for the assembly for all decisions and moving ahead and it will enter into force when 15 countries sign it and ratify it so in all 121 countries are there in the within these tropics but it will start its legal framework as an international and intergovernmental body once 15 countries join hand and move ahead in a way and this is different from other organizations in many ways one of the most important things with this organization that it will look for the need based programs which will be launched by any two countries can join hands and launch a program and other countries can join in this program and these are all voluntary no membership PS in so far as is concerned. We hope to move ahead in this framework agreement very fast and within a month or so it should be finalized. We, we believe so if the, the, our efforts go in the right direction and in Marrakesh when the next conference of parties to the UNFCCC is likely to meet from 7th of the November, this can be opened up for signature. So this was just a brief update on this. Uh, what exactly is the ISA because there is a panel. I will not mention many things more. Two things specifically I wanted to mention. One is that there are many organizations which are working in the field of renewable energy and there is no, 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 no intention of this. This is a uniquely placed to create a program and project based activities and some of the activities which are really good and which require replication that can be taken up otherwise it is different from in all ways and it has a sustainable and focused manner it will move ahead in this. Friends, so far out of 131 countries, around 45 countries have designated their national focal points for ISA. India has already donated 10 acres of land for creating its secretary and 175 crore rupees has also been, been earmarked for the ISA activities. And we look forward in a big way to move ahead in the ISA and next year will be really crucial to lay a very good foundation for the ISA. Thank you very much. I'll stop here and just look for the panelists to move ahead. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Copley, next presentation. everyone. Uh, in the last session there was a discussion on how Marcus said how the prices in Germany has come down from 80 euro cents to 10 cents, 10 euro cents in last six to seven years. Now the issue in ISA countries is that they want to do, we expect that 1000 gigawatt will be developed in, by 2030. It would require 1 trillion dollar of funds the reduced cost of funds would be a major critical factor in those countries unless the price for solar PV comes down to maybe four to five cents I think then a lot of things would not be required and that that may take maybe another two to three years 
Normally in ISA countries, the PPAs are not bankable. They take longer time for negotiation, finalization. Before bidding, they want land and water availability. They even want commitment letter from the banks. And that has a cost. That, that requires time also. Uh, what we have done here is we may standardize our PPAs, we may standardize our bidding documents. That will solve one part of the problem. With regard to reducing cost of financing, we had, we had done two, three products. I would just like to speak about in a few slides about those products. One is credit enhancement scheme, first loss facility, innovative debt first loss mechanism, and partial payment guarantee schemes that we have, we have launched in India. A few banks have also given credit enhancement for some of the bond issues. Uh, what do we gain from this? Generally, the SPV that develops the pro project gets a rating of maybe triple B or double A, uh, triple B or A plus, and they are not, I mean, if they want to go to the bond market, they are not able to raise bonds. So somebody who understands the risk that is there, they may credit enhance the issue for the bond. They can go to the bond market, raise the bond. The interest differential would be around one, one and a half percent. That is almost about 10 to 15 percent of reduction in cost of funds. A typical scenario would be like Irida backed by a co-banker. We raise, enhance the credit, uh, um, well, we give the partial guarantee, the rating of the bond, we go to the rating agency, the rating of the bond goes up and they go to the bond market, raise the money, and that is how we reduce cost by around 10, 10 to 15 percent. Uh, we would not take more than 20 percent of the exposure. The fee would be around 0 0.5 to 0 0.8 percent. Uh, uh, the SPV should have one year of operational history. It should not be lower than triple B, uh, and it should not be a defaulter. Uh, the benefits are, of course, reduced cost of funds. Uh, freeing up of capital, uh, we reduce our exposure, we can take more exposure in the same company. Similarly, in the first loss mechanism, KFW came to us, they came with a line of credit of 20 million dollars, 20 million euros. They also had an additional 4 million euros for off-grid solution for access to energy. Now, access to energy projects are inherently very risky. The, the, uh, we don't have the mortgage of assets and getting back the money was a challenge. So we decided if we can utilize $4 million that was given extra to us for ensuring our repayment, uh, we developed this product then. Then we said we will keep $2 million in a DESRA. If the project pays us back in time, this DESRA we can share with the project developers again. Similarly, $1 million we kept as a portfolio default risk. So $1 million in all the total portfolio that is there, that again will help us. And this is how we thought we will be able to fund access to energy projects. Similar product we are also trying with, uh, this is how KFW fund will come in a DESRA. We will keep $2 million here. This will be a portfolio risk reserve account. And we had also applied to Green Climate Fund for giving us a $30 million uh, fund which we will use as a first loss facility for uh, giving finances for access to energy projects. The last one, we, have, we par partial payment security mechanism which SEKI and NBBN is already running. We had seen that this results in, uh, when the go for bidding, since there is a lesser risk of off taker, the cost benefit is around 20 to 30 pesa. And if we can put some money in the, uh, payment security mechanism, uh, we, we were in discussion with World Bank and we were thinking about something like four, 400 to 450 million dollar which can, which can fund around one, 2,000 megawatt. That will help in reducing the cost, cost of the projects further. So uh, these are the three, four products that we thought we can use in India and then these can be replicated in ISA countries. Thank you. Next request, Dr. Shastri, to make a brief presentation on this application for the uh, solar application for agriculture use. Not required. Uh, 
hello i think you can hear me uh good good afternoon and sir uh, chairman sir thank you very much for giving me an opportunity and the dignitaries and dias and uh, the participant uh this is uh, a presentation that we have made up jointly uh with my colleague from the france uh, dr philip malbranchi and myself uh this is basically on scaling up solar applications this is one of the the uh, program that we are seeing apart from the affordable financing see uh, these are the two programs to start with however the cooperation is not limited to the above uh two programs only this would be expanded uh based on the discussions and depending on the requirements of the isa countries now the, there are number of participating countries we have right now with us about eight countries bangladesh ethiopia nigeria cecils sri lanka uganda france and india we are actually participating and we have actually two rounds of video conferencing and the third run is about to start in the, this uh, some sometime in the end of the october and actually we are waiting for some uh, other people also to join us immediately uh my presentation is basically uh, uh, uh works around this proposed projects there's a current status of solar energy in uh, uh, applications in isa countries need assessment pre design and clustering solutions procurement processes how this process affect the reliability of the thing technology failures network of centers uh an interim uh, internet base is a um, internet based on information system will be created for a quick information exchange and the global uh, goal to uh, f- of this program is to propose the best practices and also uh, above all uh, the steps to a dear project now need assessment if you go for that we have already done for five countries that is india uganda cecils france and bangladesh and but we are expecting some more information from the nigeria and sri lanka and ethiopia what we are really looking for is a lighting water pumping irrigation drinking water mainly for the fish ponds that's for india point of view although there are several applications but i'm limiting to that home light street lights is uganda actually we had in the uh, the video conferencing uh, then cecils also we have a lighting and solar pumps water purifiers rooftop and electrification of the schools and then france of course they are helping the african countries in the setting up a number of uh, applications street lights water purification and of course economic activities is the what my colleague proposes and the bangladesh is the irrigation of pumps and then of course solar milk sealing centers solar milk sealing centers is one of the most uh, uh, wanted application in many of other countries so i mean what are we looking for the looking at an advanced lighting system we have come in a long way uh working on this lights the i will just uh, uh point out the 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 performance studies module characteristics battery capacity storage efficiency light output distribution controllers driver efficiencies of course the damp humidity these are the environmental effect, performance effects life cycling when we study some of the countries uh, these are the some of those issues that are poor quality electronic components improper wattages of modules battery run time and issues charging arrangements lighting system design of course concept are somewhat incorrect strategies are adopted to make the system cheaper and other thing which reduce the system performance also and of course solar off grid market has limited to this particular if the quality assurance and these are the things where we got some of the information and then solar water pumping system india itself is one of the biggest user of this water pumping systems and we have a lot of experience uh the irrigation these are some of the applications that you are doing providing drinking water for water purifiers suitable to various uh, areas of the grid connect where the grid connect is erratic or not available environmental friendly of course the high cost but we are trying to reduce the cost but compared to the diesel and electricity this is much uh, cheaper and low operation cost then what are the challenges this is one of the biggest issues of course we are coming overcoming these issues in india uh, proper selection of a module pump motors this is very important high initial cost although one can you go for the uh, when the soft loans and other mechanisms as my colleague has pointed out uh poor confidence of the users if they don't work obviously people do need to use to have confidence on this ensuring adequate training of the installers this is one of the most important thing india is taking up in a big way on the training issues 
and then use of uh, use during the night hours is not possible and the calorie consumption that's one of the issues and then we have uh, other solutions for that uh, establishing market of the t market for the technology and then of course we have found some technology failures site specific module selection this is one of the biggest issue that people just select module just like that and so the other components inverters controllers motor pumps non availability of super standards in fact what we follow is uh, something like iec or some other standards but there are specific in or country specific standards are required that's what we are targeting the type of systems and of course country specific type of systems used field assessment and inspections the not much of information is available on this side training requirements we are trying to focus on that well how do you go about r&d strategies and this is one of some of the experts i have taken from my colleague uh, from anril uh, funding growth uh, strategies training standards development and then of course bankability and infrastructure development these are some of the r&d strategies and then you could go for that uh, particularly on the water pumping area and then uh, the procurement process is another area where we have to a lot of uh, 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 what do you call uh, focus study of the procurement methods adopted in isa countries how they are procuring what are the things is there a public procurement system actually available what is or is there what are the mechanism of uh, procurement tendering and support of the policies deployment for solar application impact long term impact on the procurement and the reliability because the process of procurement if the procurement is not proper perhaps uh, you end up in a bad component or a module dissemination of such successful models to other isa countries network of uh, technology centers actually we have taken a call from various countries but we are uh, waiting for some information from most of the countries however the information is available from india uganda and france we have a number of stress centers these centers will be grown up not only for the training for the r and d testing and other activities and but we are looking for information from our colleagues from bangladesh sri lanka nigeria and so on and other countries as well so we are having trying to provide some training programs to the isa nations uh, the import uh, of course these are the the details and what we wanted to achieve through this program of isa countries establish a network of technology research centers a digital platform development of common standards protocols testing monitoring certification so that it would be easier for somebody to get it tested and standardized harmonizing the tendering tendering and documentation process for procurement of system set up network of test platforms to ensure the quality and establish common training courses and e learning platform so finally the outlook and conclusion uh, uh the next steps will be uh, the review of the priority needs then we add more priorities identify examples of the current practices for instance india is i'm collecting we are collecting rather information on solar water pumping france is collecting some the street lighting some other country collect uh, from the water purifiers some other on the rooftops like that we can have that and select examples of the best practices and we can say it is isa recommended and of course an open collaboration process is underway to gradually improve the quality to make the quality affordable to all uh, with that thank you very much i come to an end of my presentation thank you thank you dr sastri now let me introduce uh, dr uh, cedric uh, who is a uh, advisor in the ministry of foreign affairs from government of france he is also the national focal point for isa from france and before he starts let me tell you he along with our focal point mr methani whenever we were stuck in lot of problems in coming to a mutually acceptable draft for the this thing both of them came with lot of innovative solutions and we look forward to both uh, our focal point methani and uh, dr cedric to always help us with your innovative solutions thank you thank you sir uh, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen it's a real pleasure and honor to be here with you and uh, uh, talk about the isa which is very important for france as you know uh, uh, prime minister modi and president hollande uh, jointly launched this initiative last year on the 30th of november 2015 in paris on the margins of cop 21 and it is important for us because i think we share here a, a common vision of what is required and what is possible this common vision is that 
a change of scale in the deployment of solar energy is at the same time required and possible. It is required to achieve the objectives set by the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. It is also required to achieve climate justice, that is to say to take solar from rich world markets to developing countries with high solar potential. And it is possible from a technological and financial point of view. Now, this change of scale cannot be achieved with a business-as-usual approach. We need new modes of collaboration, and this is what the ISA is about. I just would like to give a quotation of what Prime Minister Modi said last year in his speech uh, during the launch event uh, of the uh, Solar Alliance. He said the following, we will collaborate on research and development, we will share knowledge and best practices, we will discuss regulatory issues and promote common standards, we will encourage joint ventures and develop innovative financing mechanism. What is important here is the word we. We, the country of the Solar Alliance, the solar resource rich countries. We, the relevant stakeholders who contribute to solar energy deployment and development. Countries in the Solar Alliance are going to work together, are going to act in a coordinated manner. Many institutions already write very beautiful reports and make uh, recommendations about what should be done. The ISA is all about implementation. We are not going to write reports, we are going to act and act in a coordinated manner. All the countries who are represented in the room, all the companies who are represented in the room, they share specific challenges in the scaling up of solar energy. The idea is very simple, very basic. If we act in a coordinated manner, rather than in isolation, we will address these challenges much more easily because these challenges are common to at least all the solar resource rich countries. What is the situation today? We have an uncoordinated approach, lack of knowledge transfer, sometimes incoherent policies across several countries. This leads to a disaggregated and small-scale demand. And a disaggregated and small-scale demand leads to insufficient investment, high cost of technology, high cost of capital, poor quality, and so on, and so on. What, we, what the ISA intends to do is the following. A coordinated approach across solar-rich countries with replication of best practices, sharing of knowledge, uh, this leads to a harmonized and large-scale demand. And the large-scale demand gives a strong lever to access capital at lower costs and in bigger volumes to increase quality um, and also attract innovation, increase manufacturing capability, and so on. So basically, what was done here in India with the domestic uh, efficient lighting program with the LED bulbs could be a scale model of what the International Solar Alliance can achieve at the international level. Massive aggregation of demand, replication of a successful business model, strong political impulse, which is uh, also, of course, required. So this is basically the, the idea of the Alliance it will carry out its objective through targeted programs. And Dr. Poplin, and Dr. Sastry spoke about the two first programs that were proposed and launched uh, in April in uh, New York City. Each program will address a specific challenge to the scaling up of solar. For instance, cost of finance is a challenge to be addressed by affordable finance at scale program. Poor quality leading to high operational costs is the main challenge to be addressed by the other program. So each program will address a specific challenge to the scaling of solar. 
Each program will consist of a set of actions to be taken in a coordinated manner by countries willing to join the program on a voluntary basis. Each program will uh, aim at better harmonizing and aggregating the demand across several countries and within countries so as to create a, a, a common market, a common buyer's market, which will empower solar resource rich countries and give the, the lever they need to access uh, finance, investment, innovation, etc. Each program will be designed so as to achieve maximum scale effect and will include simple, measurable, mobilizing targets. So this is basically the, the, uh, the functioning mode, let's say, of the alliance. Then, of course, we need a strong and efficient mechanism for coordination and decision-making across countries. We need also a secretariat that will assist the countries in their collective work. And at all stages, we need strong political impulse and leadership. Up to this stage, 43 countries have identified a national focal point for the International Solar, Solar Alliance in their capital cities, so that capital cities can be in direct touch, in change, uh, exchange information about the needs, the objectives, about the obstacles faced by different countries, and design programs adapted to countries' needs. And let me just mention that those countries together represent uh, 4 billion and 651 million people across the globe. So this is only the beginning of the story. Uh, a lot of work has to be done. Um, but I would like to highlight uh, the, the, the key messages that uh, solar-rich countries through this the, the Solar Alliance want to uh, send. They want to send a strong message regarding their needs and objectives in terms of deployment of solar energy as well as obstacles faced. They are willing and ready to act in a coordinated manner to address collectively common challenges. They are ready to aggregate and harmonize their demand. They are willing and ready to work hand in hand with all relevant stakeholders, including private sector stakeholders, to define best practices and solutions to the challenges they face. And they are willing and ready to lead from the front what Prime Minister Modi in Paris last year called the global solar revolution, which is possible and which is required. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we have left with about 20 to 25 minutes. We have four more panelists to speak. So I would request them to be brief and within the five minutes limit. Uh, now I would request uh, Mr. Yuri from United Nations. Uh, he is the resident coordinator for UN and representative, resident representative of, in India for UNDP. Esteemed Chair, esteemed colleagues and friends on the dais, ladies and gentlemen in the audience, pleasure to be with here, here with you today. Um, I just want to make sure that the audience is not asleep and uh, uh, also because we're living in a very interesting time. Um, this weekend, India ratified the Paris Climate Agreement and Yesterday, the European Union presented also credentials. So on 4th of November, the climate agreement comes into force, right before Marrakesh. And I want to congratulate India and France both on a great... No, no, let's stand up. Let's stand up and do a proper applause. Thank you very much. I think it requires a bit of a stand up. It's a, it's, a, it's a great moment. And now you're all awake. Thank you very much. Um, it, it is indeed, uh, jokes aside, a great moment in time. I think the world has been waiting for this as comprehensive and as binding for, for frankly, decades or 
many of us who still remember the Kyoto Protocol years, uh, well, we've been waiting for it since then. So again, congratulations to France, who's been a, a leading engine on this. Certainly the United States and China, who managed to cut a deal on this, and, and certainly India, that, that chose to be the founding member of the original group of countries that, that makes this um, agreement a reality. So I, I am from the United Nations, and the question is, why was my Secretary General on that same stage a year ago in Paris with Prime Minister Modi and, uh, Modi and, and the President Hollande of France uh, supporting and inaugurating the launch of the idea to launch the International Solar Alliance? And, and I have to say, uh, you know, the reason is frankly very simple. First of all, this Secretary General, eight years ago, formed what, what many of you still remember was called the Sustainable Energy for All. At that time, the technology was not yet at the level it is today. The prices were not at the level they are today. Um, the ambition was not at the level it is today. But he said every person in the world should have a solar lamp on their table, should have energy in their house and in their village. And in a way, he echoed uh, what many were hoping would happen a lot quicker than it did. I think Prime Minister Modi then, because his experience was much more con concrete and his ambition was for India to succeed in this, he rolled out a much bigger ambition, which is this ISA. First of all, it is and will be an organization of countries, primarily in the South, but certainly open to everybody and relying on technology, expertise, experience, and some financing from the North. So it is a prime example of not only South-South, but triangular cooperation. But it's, it is also something that should not be part of the United Nations. So we are supporting this because we see the ambition, we see the vision, we believe the time has come, and more importantly, because India is a big factor in this. The Solar Alliance, I think, will take over some of the great experiences that are starting to happen in India and renewable applications and renewable and solar technologies, and show some of the other countries how you can do this at scale. I mean, what we're particularly interested in, and apart from the ambitious targets that, that India is taking onto itself with, you know, 100 gigabytes, uh, gigawatts in, 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 in solar applications in the coming, what, six, seven years. But what India is piloting is de-risking, creating the right policies for the market, aggregating markets, um, and certainly experimenting quite successfully with blended finance, where this is not a public sector investment project, but in its overwhelming majority, it is a private sector undertaking that makes it sustainable and makes it commercially viable. These are very, very interesting experiences that, frankly, have been tried in the North, and I think our colleague from Germany clearly illustrated um, both the, 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 the success, but also the learnings and the experiences that come from that, uh, uh, from that success. But it has never been tried at this scale in the South. And I think if India, with its legitimacy and with its open relationship with a lot of countries um, between the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn and much wider than that, can lead on this by showing an example and transplanting some of the experiences and programs that my colleagues have already spoken about, then I have no doubt that this will be an absolute success. Frankly, we in the United Nations have been sl slightly frustrated um, over the last decade why such a perspective thing like solar technology is not picking up faster. We ourselves implement about two billion projects, um, two, million dollars, two billion dollars worth of projects in renewable energy around the world. But that is, that is a drop in the bucket um, compared to what is really required. So when, when, we, when we saw ISA forming and the countries responding to it with such enthusiasm, we couldn't resist but support it in anything we can, whether it's with expertise, whether it's our net networks around the world, whether it's political support or whether it's operational and organizational support. We are there to be with you and travel this journey with India and, and France 
and many of the countries that will join the Solar Alliance in the coming weeks and months and, and years. So, all the best to you all, all the best to the Solar Alliance. May we succeed together for the betterment of humanity. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yuri, in being innovative in keeping your audience awake. So, uh, Honorable Minister is likely to join us in just about 8 to 10 minutes. We may have to wind up this session. So, I'll request Sanjay, who has two slides to just make first. Then other two panelists possibly can make very brief remarks uh, on the important points. Thank you so much, sir, for giving me this opportunity. And thank you so much to the organizers for inviting me to speak here. Can someone help with the slides, please? Yes, here. Yeah. I'll be very, very brief. Uh, I just want to want you to look at this slide. This is the most recent synthesis by the Secretariat of the Climate Change Convention about the present status of our INDCs the uh, nationally determined contributions on climate change and how far we are off the target of two degrees Celsius or one degree Celsius. As and you can see, we are widely off the target. Even after we implement all the INDCs, we will still be very, very wide off the target. And no one has a clue how we are actually going to achieve the target which we have set in Paris except except perhaps for one thing and that thing is the solar energy we know that uh, most of the emission is coming from fossil fuels either for power or for transport but we also know that solar is so abundant that solar energy can meet all the demand and this small the, uh, the, the larger square, red square denotes that how much uh, th this, particular so uh, this particular red square could meet all the demands of the whole world, <coughs> electricity demand. Uh, there are th three problems with solar, though. One is uh, at the village level. There are uh, financing models for sustaining village mini-grids are not there at all. Yeah? It needs innovative financing mechanism. It needs innovative uh, business models for new revenue generation. And we are helping a lot of countries in that. Second is about grid integration, about which uh, we have talked about in the second uh, session. But the most important one is that solar is not available in all the countries all the time. Yeah? Sometimes it is day, sometimes it is night, sometimes it is cloudy, sometimes it is not. So what do we do? The, the idea here is that if we connect the whole world through a grid, a global grid, then perhaps this uh, could be possible that uh, solar, if it is there in one part of the world, could feed to the rest of the world. And this particular, this is, this is, this is a hypothetical diagram. Uh, and uh, the Director General of IRENA has confirmed that if we have a grid starting in Ulaanbaatar uh, and ending in, for example, Marrakesh, it will be, it will be operational for 22 hours a day. So 22 hours a day we can get our electricity from such type of a global grid. What do we need actually? What do we need actually for this? We need political will. And that political will, the Prime Minister Modi has shown in terms of this solar alliance. Solar alliance is one which actually has set the whole tone of a new energy paradigm, a new energy system for the whole world. If we are having alliance of 121 countries, not only 
solar generation in those 121 countries. And why we talk about 121 countries? We can talk about all the 197 countries of the world. All the countries together, if they come and they integrate their grid system, as we have done for communication, it's not hypothetical in fact, you would see that we already have optical fiber submarine system across the world. So, so we have a, a, a precedence and based on that precedence, if we can have a global grid, we can solve the problem not only of climate change, but also of universal energy access. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, please. Now, both of you can. Um, thank you, thank you, Chair. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting ADB to this important event. Given a very limited time, let me make very three very brief points. First of all, we do need to celebrate the achievements that we have made in the renewable energy generation, whether in the state of uh, Gujarat or India or in many other countries. But having said that, one thing that worries me is that whether we are catching up with the, with the speed that we need, uh, given the country's demand for energy is, 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 is growing so rapidly. So I think it's very important for us that the lag that we had in the past, whether we, are, we need to catch up that one first, and then we also need to catch up with the growth that each of these countries are having in, the, in terms of economic development. So we should be able to come up with the enough renewable energy resources to meet those economic uh, demand for energy of this country. That's the first point that I wanted to make. The second point is from ADB side, promotion of renewable energy, energy efficiency, and energy access is a very high priority. And then we have been making an investment of about at least for $2 billion from the 2011. And then if you look at last year, ADB made an investment of about $5 plus billion in the energy sector, of which about $2.5 billion was for, energy, uh, for clean energy. This may sound a little bit big, but at the same time, given the need for this region, this is still very, very small. But we hope to increase that one further moving forward. Our president has announced that ADB is financing for climate change will be over $6 billion a year starting 2020, of which about a $4 billion will be on the climate change mitigation side of it. So I think that these are some positive needs that I wanted to bring it to you. Another positive news which happened just last week on the 30th of September related to energy and India is that the ADB board has approved two important projects for India. One will be is about uh, is $200 million to push for energy efficiency through our Energy Efficiency Services Limited ESL, and we hope to that will help move this uh, agenda for LED bulb, digital light, and agriculture pump in this country. And then we have ADB board has also approved a $500 million investment to uh, Punjab National Bank to support for their solar rooftop program under the Ministry of uh, New and Renewable Energy. So I think these are two positive news that I can share in, term, in front of you. In terms of ISA, ISA, we wanted to reiterate our support and commitment. I think this has come in a very timely and looking at the progress that it has made. I think we should all be proud of uh, the achievement that we have made in ISA in a short time frame. ADB is very much committed and, and very much willing to support as we move forward. But I do want to emphasize the need for project development. I think the money may come in either from here or there, but tangible projects development, good projects development, good pipeline of solar projects is, is the need of the hour. We all talk about the solar technology, we know it's good and so on, but where are these projects, the tangible, bankable project? This is where I think if ISA's role will become a very, very important, uh, important role to play in this direction. And of course, capacity building, lessons learned, and so on, will be a very important part of it. So let me stop it here. I know we have a very limited time. Thank you once again. I know I'm the last speaker of the last session of uh, today's uh, International Energy Conference. I'll again keep my comment very, very brief. See, as everyone says that uh, there is no dearth of financing, there is a huge amount of capital globally available. What is important uh, for, uh, for all the ISA member countries are to structure their projects in a manner so that they become most attractive when it comes to investment decision. Now, to reduce the project level risk, what can be done is just to take care of each component of, of project, whether it is land, whether it is evacuation, whether it is uh, uh, offtake, whether it is the project quality. And uh, we were thankful to MNRE. What we did was that we studied all the successful solar projects across the globe, and we came out with 50 successful projects. The idea was that uh, the, all, all the member countries should, should get a sense that we, 
which all projects have been structured in what manner and how how they become successful in, in respective country the problem is that once once we we are able to structure projects in a manner wherein the risk of the project comes down significantly the risk premium which is being charged by investors reduces so that is one second is again how to attract low, uh, low cost long term capital uh, from say pension funds from insurance companies from uh, uh, from multilaterals and so so there are two two concerns that is coming one is the credit uh, because despite uh, projects getting commissioned the rating of the project is is not up to the level what is required by say pension funds or insurance funds so there are probably credit enhancement and and several instruments of credit enhancement two of which have been suggested by ereda and uh, uh, of course ifcl also has a scheme adp was also supporting one of the scheme of ifcl so so those kind of credit enhancement schemes are extremely essential if you are talking about uh, attracting long term funds in, in in this sector and second is to take care of the risk of hedging because what happens even though there is a good amount of Uh, of very low cost capital available but but when you convert into local currency the the cost almost the entire benefit neutralizes primarily because of high hedging cost and this is very contrary to to the long term depreciation that is there of the of the currency so if suitable mechanism can be worked out wherein the hedging cost is somewhere comparable to the long term uh, long term long term depreciation of currency that will also result into huge savings so if these two three steps are being taken i think that there could be substantial saving in the in the financing cost thank you thank you very much uh, i'm happy that all the panelists uh, notwithstanding the brief time uh, they were given they have made wonderful interventions and wonderful remarks and we will definitely gain from there uh, if anybody has quick one or two question from any panelist uh, you can ask otherwise due to shortage of time we will have to uh, wind up this session any question one or two qu maximum two questions we can take oh okay so uh now i am told honorable minister has already come so i take this opportunity to thank the panelist as well as everybody in the audience and uh, we will uh, uh, now uh, have the pleasure of having the valedictory session now thank you and uh, on behalf of the conference i thank dr singh for moderating our session ladies and gentlemen may i request you to please remain in your seats uh, minister goel is already here and will be starting the panel immediately Thank you please do not get up please remain seated